Hello, my Global Echelon family. It is unconscionable and unimaginable to most of us that there could be a war today, something so primordial, so something that we had thought in the last few wars that we had learned as humans, that we cannot disagree and then take the lives of others. And so our work today as agents of change is to reach back inside ourselves and see if we can shift the genetics of this warring energy. Many people have said that humans hold within their genetics um, a, vi a sense of violence, a kind of violence that is at the core of us. I don't believe that. I know that um, that violence and that, that whole expression of be or do what I want or I take your life is just simply a throwback to times primordial that do not belong to the evolution of consciousness, the evolution of our species of, of humanity. And so there are two aspects of our work today. The first is to recognize something that my higher self has always said. Whatever you see outside you is within you. And so if there is a war, a terrible war that is beginning outside us, then there must be something of that kind of violence within us. And we may feel we have no control over what is happening in the world. We have control over the energies that are inside us because, after all, it is that um, collective um, uh, negativity uh, that is stirred when, when one sees a war uh, that triggers violence. I, th I, I am quite sure that all of the gun uh, tragedies that are happening today are because uh, we see it in movies. We've been desensitized, been desensitized um, around the planet. Uh, young people think, shoot them. And we have to change that. And let us begin by dissolving away that warring energy inside us. Because with the consciousness that we can touch today, what are the causes of war? your God against my God, uh, I need your territory, I need the mm, b abundance that you have. Uh, this, this is not a consciousness of this century of the level of humans that are on the planet at this time. If you need more food, why would I not help you to get it? If you need more space, why can we not share it? Uh, if you are thinking of the future of your children, as am I. We both want a better future for our children, not a future in which they grew up in war or fear. And so there are other ways for us to uh, move uh, against these kinds of throwback energies. So we'll clear it from inside ourselves. You will feel much lighter um, when you do this. And then we will reach into our genetics and access that whatever that throwback, whatever that psychogenetic strain of your father's 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 father uh, was warring because the king said so, etc. And take that off our genetic encoding. And I know that when we do things like that, it does seed that potential into the world for a shift that will take us from this old pattern, king of the mountain, and into a more enlightened world where the future of our children is bright and the experience of our days is good so that we could truly say life is good and sacred and the life of every being must be that to us as well as our own. So. I want to say at the beginning of this that I am so grateful that you have the consciousness to explore these issues within the self and, and to recognize that what, 
happens to you, happens to me. What I do inside myself ripples out to you and out and out and out. So let us then, let us do what consciousness can do to change the situation, the people involved in it. Because we can and we must. So let's begin with our breath and the light that will expand our consciousness so that we don't have to hold who are the good guys and who are the bad guys, but that this whole thing, any war, is not uh, for the good of the whole. It is not something that will create a better future, and we can change it now. Close your eyes. Let's begin with our breath that brings us into a meditative state that expands our consciousness. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Allowing our exhalation to slow our brain and expand our consciousness. Again, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And now reach up into the cosmos and pull down a beautiful beam of white light through the top of your head, down into your stomach, solar plexus, the center of the emotional body, and laser that white light out across our planet and back into the cosmos. And once again, drawing that white light down all the way into the solar plexus, stomach, and laser the white light and feel it and perceive it in your consciousness, expanding out across the planet. And as that light moves across the planet, imagine again that it begins to encompass the entire planet and then back up into the cosmos. And take a deep breath and feel yourself center, calm and conscious and open your eyes. So now, let us ask our body where it's holding energies of violence. And it occurs to me that it's important to recognize that sometimes when you feel angry or violent, you might be simply picking up energies that are exuding from someone else or groups of others. And we know that uh, when, when groups are together, if there's a violent energy, uh, very often people will drop down to that violent uh, vibration and it becomes uh, a poison that flows through the group. And so uh, we'll break this into two parts. Uh, a little bit of that violence that may be a residue in you that's not yours. Children, again do this all the time, sucking in the emotions and the energies, uh, even across the planet. When it comes to these kinds of frequencies, space is not involved. You could be picking up what's going on right now uh, across the world or in your own family. So let's do that first. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath into your body. Ask your body where it's holding war energy or violent energy or negativity or hate that you have drawn in from someone else. It's not yours. And see where you feel or see or hear in your body that that kind of energy that you've taken in is, has taken hold in you. Whatever you get. Bring your conscious awareness into that place in your body that's holding that kind of negative, warlike, fighting energy that's been taken in from someone or some place, some group, some situation outside you. We all do this unconsciously. Wherever that is, 
bring your conscious awareness into that place in your body and open it so that you can taste, you can recognize that energy and know that you've taken it in. It's not yours. It's not you. And ask that place what frequency of light it needs to release that warring, fighting energy that's not yours. You don't need to even know from whom you've taken it in, but simply that your body can reverberate that truth. It's not yours. What is the color that that energy needs to be released from your body. See what color comes to you. And draw that color directly into that place in your body and feel the power of that light. Begin to absorb that energy and dissolve it and release it. So just breathe that color in, keep sucking that color in, and feel it washing away that energy. A little bit more. And take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. There are so many kinds of energies and thought forms and ideas that we absorb from the outside world. And how does that happen? It happens because when you are in your mother's womb, you not only are taking in the nutrients or the blood from your mother, you're taking in all of her emotions and everything that she's taking in are coming in through your umbilical cord. So the direction of energy is into you. Children uh, are, are still often taking in energy from the outside world to define themselves, to show them what, what they can be or not, or how they have to behave or what they have to do to be loved. All those things come from what they observe is happening in the outside world. And then as they observe it, they take it in because they're like little sponges. And in fact, that residue of that patterning continues throughout our lives. So often people feel sick and they're really picking up a sickness from someone else, usually from someone that they love or someone that's close to them, but it can be from some uh, person that you've known in another incarnation across the planet. And so you have that vulnerability. That's how this happens. And it happens all the time until we continually release from our bodies anything or anyone who has penetrated our field uh, because of emotions, because of contracts of vows, because of uh, the power of energy. And this is why this exercise of drawing the white light in and lasering it out is so important because it's the direction of energy. If the energy is coming through you and out from you, energy must be equal in vibration to that energy or higher to get in. It can't be lower, can't be slower, more negative, because your energy is radiating out. And that is the way that you protect your consciousness, your thoughts, and your emotions, by bringing that light in through you and extending it out, the direction of energy out from you, rather than sucking in. So that's a good way to feel that you can be sure that you're clear of anything that doesn't belong to you. And then the next thing is back to that conversation. Do we, as humans, hold within our genetic encoding um, a repertoire, a patterning of violence? Uh, all of the kinds of violence, because there's the violence of words, there's, a, there's the violence of thoughts, and then there's the violence of physical energy. They are all destructive to our consciousness and to the love of the human heart and, and to the evolution of our soul, which is why we're all here, 
to release from us patterns that maybe were comfortable or agreed upon or worthy or honorable in times past. They are not now. We don't need to fight for a king. We don't need to fight. We can find other ways, human ways. And so let's clear that off our genetic encoding. You may be surprised to discover that we can do that. I call this psychogenetics. It means that we inherit psychogenetically emotions, belief systems, um, responses, all kinds of things from, again, uh, our bloodlines back into the distant past and also uh, just from human genetics. And so let's clear this from us so that the generations that come after us will be free of that. Close your eyes once again. Take a deep breath into your body and just imagine that there is a spot on your DNA. Now it could be on your emotional or spiritual DNA, but if you think of DNA, you think of that double helix of the physical DNA, that's fine. The important thing is to find the very spot. And here's the question. Where am I holding the psychogenetic inheritance of violence in my genetic encoding? It could look like a black spot or a shadow, a tear. See how you perceive it. There's no right answer to this. And once you find that spot that you can imagine is on your DNA, and take a deep breath and bring into your mind's eye the most radiant white light, a beam of white light, and laser it directly into that point of, in, of inheritance of violence and destruction. And laser that white light and allow the light to dissolve it off your DNA. Your DNA is nothing but paired letters. Light can change everything. Everything is made of light. So laser that white light into that point on your DNA and dissolve it off right now. And now take a deep breath into your body and command the trillions of cells of your body to record this shift in your genetic encoding. You do not need to carry the violence of our forefathers into this world. So breathe deeply and command the cells, the mind of the cells, to shift that encoding. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I have learned in working with genetics is that the experiences of our forefathers become our genetic encoding. Experience alters probability and possibility and, and becomes a, a point of reference that then plays itself out generation after generation. Imagine the cavemen, imagine the early tribes, Imagine the religious wars, all of the fighting of our forefathers, even the wars that are going on now and have just hopefully finished in some places. All of them, their energy is going into the ethers of the world and, and penetrating us at all times. We must now be keepers of peace because we can find the peace inside us and radiate that out to others. And so, let us imagine that all of humanity, just as you just did, that we're sending that brilliant white light out and that it is penetrating the genetic encoding of all humanity and releasing that. And once that is released, what will take its place? If we feel safe, we can be peaceful. We can find our way through dilemmas. We can find 
the beautiful human heart that is the true genetic encoding of each and all of us. So close your eyes once more. Take a deep breath into your body. Bring all of humanity into your mind's eye, and especially humanity that right now are engaged in this warlike experiences, the confusion of, of what each one needs or wants or demands. And again, focus on that brilliant white light because it is only that frequency, that photon frequency of light that alters genetics. And reach up into the cosmos and pull exactly that white light that will shift the genetics. So pull that white light down to the top of your head, laser it out to your solar plexus, and imagine that as you laser that pure white light into all of humanity, that humanity is being freed of the experiences of the forefathers, of the genetics of the forefathers. Mm -hmm. And now, ask humanity what color it needs from you to awaken the highest octave of the human heart. A heart that has compassion, that honors life, that cares for the healing of the planet and all the beings. And see what color you feel that humanity is showing you right now that will open the heart of humanity and stop the wars and bring about a solution, many solutions, other than violence. If you have the color, reach up into the cosmos and draw that color down to the top of your head and laser it out to humanity who asks for that frequency of light and laser it into humanity with that potential of the opening of the human heart, the uplifting of the consciousness of the heart, and the, and the possibility of coming together in peace. Keep sending that light until you feel a shift. Maybe humanity dissolves or, or you can feel a sigh of relief or smiles or a kind of shift that you can imagine right now. Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. And so what we're seeing now is this warring energy between the Ukraine and Russia. If all of us were to extend an energy that allows for uh, there to be a cessation of that, uh, another way of coming around and so that everyone feels safe and the future for our children is not war and destruction, but that energy of finding the way to touch the heart and the needs of another. And so one last time, let us send an energy of peace into Russia and the Ukraine that there is a way through this. There's a way out of this, this terrible, unconscionable choice. Close your eyes once more and bring Russia and the Ukraine into your mind's eye. You might see the, the map of the place. You might see a sense of the people, the lands. But just feel these two energies, these two countries, their energies, and ask them collectively what color they need to find peace, to choose peace. 
See what color comes to you. And reach up into the cosmos and draw that color. Everything is made of light. It's very powerful. Draw it down into your solar plexus and laser it out to Russia and Ukraine. And see, each one may choose a different color, or it might be the same color for both of them, but feel that that lasering out of that frequency of light uh, encompasses, surrounds and encompasses both of them. And that that frequency of light is the light of peace. And just imagine, maybe that you imagine that the weapons are put down, maybe you imagine, as is true in some places, that, that Russian and Ukraine families that have intermixed are embracing each other, that the brother does not have to fight brother, that it's over. So keep sending that light and see how many images or how many um, expressions of coming to peace can come to you. And when you feel something begin to shift there, un unravel, that light comes in, that the frequency of light that they ask for is penetrating. Imprint that and take a deep breath and open your eyes. We always say peace is a choice. It is. But the most magical part of peace is a choice is that if you and I choose it inside ourselves, in our own lives, if we extend that out as agents of change, peace can come and we are participating in the future of humanity and the choices of everyone. So I thank you profoundly for doing these exercises in consciousness and participating in the highest octave to make a change and a difference on our planet right now at this moment from your hearts. Great love.